Electronic engine controls give you smooth fingertip control over the power settings of your engines, which makes maneuvering so much more enjoyable. With mechanical controls you're moving a push-pull cable, other physical objects and there's always a bit of friction involved, but electronic engine controls give you a very smooth, enjoyable experience. In this video we will look at the normal operation of engine controls, the system choices that you have, how to adjust the system so it works perfectly on your boat and how to install electronic engine controls. When you watch this video, please be aware that Vetus has designed the system to be very flexible. We offer solutions for one, two, three, up to four steering stations, single twin engines, trolling valves, trim options, and even solutions for engines that are partly mechanical, for instance for throttle or gearbox. We will start with normal operation and that is the same for any kind of setup. How to take command at the steering station, activate the warm-up function, the trolling function. Then we will have a look at the system overview, which parts do you need, how to select the correct components for your installation. When you install the system, a couple of adjustments have to be made. For instance, the direction of stroke, how far should the stroke go, to make sure that the system operates as safely and reliable as possible. When working with electronic engine controls, there's a couple of choices to be made. What we prefer is a fully electric setup where both throttle and gearbox are operated electrically. We also offer solutions where throttle is mechanical or where the gearbox is mechanical. And you can even convert old-fashioned mechanical controls to fully electronic controls. Then there's of course the choice between a single or a twin engine setup. Do you need a trolling valve? Now, a trolling valve enables you to maneuver the ship at any desirable speed. With a normal gearbox, when you click forward, the propeller has a minimum speed and typically that speed is a little bit on the fast side for easy maneuvering. With a trolling valve you have full control over your propeller speed from zero basically up to full power. So you can travel as slowly as precisely as you want to. Many faster boats are provided with trim options, for instance trim flaps or trim controls over a Z drive. And of course there's the option of a second, third and fourth steering station. Normal operation is the same for all of these versions. When you start the engines, the display will first show you the firmware session. To take control at this command station, push the command button for one and a half second. The system has now entered engine warm-up mode, where you have precise control over engine power to warm up the engines. So you can see the RPM gauges go up. This is a bit much for warming up an engine. To leave warm-up mode, push the warm-up button and the controls now enter trolling valve mode. If I apply power, you can see that the propellers rotate very slowly and RPM stays low even if I apply more throttle. This gives you very precise control over propeller speed, you're at ship speed. To go to full power mode, push the command button and now you can see that if I apply more throttle, the propellers really speed up and RPM increases as well. At the moment, the system is in split stick mode where I can use one engine at a time. This makes for very precise docking. On longer trips, you want the engines to synchronize, push both top buttons at the same time, and now both engines operate with one throttle, both in forward, neutral and reverse. The other lever is now inactive. To go back to split stick mode, push the both top buttons for one and a half seconds. And now you have full control over the boat again. When you return in the marina, you want to enter the trolling valve mode. To do so, press the command button for one and a half second. You're now in trolling valve mode, giving you very precise control over your propeller speed. And once you have docked the boat, switch off the system and you've enjoyed a day out on the water. In case of power loss or an emergency, you can use the manual override function. Now the system is operating normally, but if you want to gain manual control, find the manual control button, rotate it clockwise until you feel the system is being released, you will feel a little click, and then you can move the manual lever up and down. So rotate the button clockwise, and now you can move the manual lever up and down, for instance to go to forward, neutral or half gear, or throttle up or down. 
the electronic lever is now inoperable. To regain normal function, rotate the button counterclockwise all the way till it's fully released. Move the control lever up or down until you feel it latch, until you feel it click. And now normal operation is restored. There are several self-protection modes in the system. One protects the system against overload if it simply takes too much force to reach an end position. And the second version is where the end position is reached or almost reached and there's an error close to that end position. For instance, if the stroke wasn't adjusted properly, there will be an error close to the end position and the system will go into error mode in about four minutes. When there's an error during the stroke, it will go into error mode almost immediately. So this is normal operation, but here we are blocking the system, for instance, with a bit of tool that fell into it, trying to go into reverse gear. There's now a problem halfway during the stroke and in about 10 seconds, the system goes into an overload protection mode shown by the E. The control levers are now completely inoperable. The system won't respond to changes in the setting. So even if you go back to forward gear, the system won't respond. All four LEDs are blinking to indicate a malfunction. If the obstruction was found close to the end position, it would take longer. The levers would still respond, but typically the system goes to a low power setting. In this case, the system doesn't respond to the control lever at all anymore. Switch off power, go into the manual mode to release the object. There will be a lot of stress in the system. Turn the knob until it's manually released. Rotate the knob counterclockwise to go back to normal mode. Move the control lever up or down until you feel it latch in, until you feel it click. Apply power again and now the system is fully functioning again. So if you go to command mode, and the warmer period. Now the system will work as designed again. Because of the many choices that Vetus offers, we've created this table. It's part of our catalog, you can download it from the website, and this table will guide you through the system choices that you have. Before you enter this table, check your engine manual or your gearbox manual whether they are electrically or mechanically operated. Whenever possible, always go for the electric option as it makes the installation much easier. We offer solutions for ships that are partly mechanical. So for instance, if only the gearbox or the throttle is mechanical or if both are mechanically operated. But again, try to use the electric option as it makes installation much easier. The next choice is whether you want to go for the EC3, the composite model, or the EC4, the fully stainless steel model. Check the styling of your boat, and when the lever is mounted outside, it might make sense to use the stainless steel option. Always one means that you need one of those controls uh, at a given location, at a steering station. If you have multiple steering stations, of course you have to buy multiple control heads. In the next row, you have a choice whether you want to go for the trolling valve option or the trim option. Unfortunately, it's not possible to have trolling and trim in one lever. What, you, what we then uh, advise is to use the trolling valve option of your throttle control and to have a separate panel for trim control. The table ends with an overview of how many cables you need and which kind of cables. When you have a partially or fully mechanically operated engine, you need the control box or actuator box, as it's also called, that is shown top left. Basically, this box translates the position of the gear lever on the dashboard to a lever that's shown on the right hand side of the control box, which will move either throttle and or the gear box into the correct position. One of the most important settings of this system is the length of the stroke and the direction of the stroke. Before you do this, Please make a couple of labels which show up, down, as it's called in the manual, but also forward, neutral, aft, which you can tape to the control box, because this is an area that can get very confusing very rapidly.
For the next example, we will change both the direction of the stroke and the length of the stroke. To do so, we've marked the control box with up and down, and that's marked according to the manual. To set to the correct stroke, you can jog the control lever up and down, and to see which direction is up or down, we've taped it to the control box. On the other side of the control box, we've added labels with forward, neutral, reverse. And those labels are given by the gearbox. So on the gearbox, check in which direction the cable should move to go forward. And that should correspond with the same position on the control box. Because when the system is delivered, we don't know which direction would be forward or reverse. And the same, of course, applies for throttle. Now, in the manual, it will tell you to first adjust the length of the stroke. We strongly suggest to check the correct direction of the stroke first, which we will do in the next video. But first, let's check if the direction of travel is correct. In order to do that, we will start the system by applying 12 or 24 volt. To take command at this command station, push the command button for one and a half second. System is now in warm up mode. So to apply the gearbox, press the warm up button. And you can see that if I push the control lever forward on the dashboard, the lever moves to the up position on the control box, which unfortunately is reverse on our gearbox. Let's check if it's the same in the other direction, reverse throttle, and the lever moves to the down position, which is forward on the gearbox. So we have to change the direction of travel. In order to do that, press the up and down button at the same time, press enter, and depending on the system, you have to change the A1, 2, 3 or 4 setting. The manual will tell you which one to change. To change, simply push up or down, press enter to confirm, and now check correct operation. And you can see now if I push the control lever in the reverse position, so on the dashboard, the throttle is in the reverse position, the lever moves in the up direction, which is indeed reverse on the gearbox. So we've confirmed that we've changed the direction of travel. So again, to change direction of travel, press up and down, enter, go to the correct setting with up or down, check operation, press enter to confirm. And now you can see we've changed the direction again. Another key setting is the length of the stroke. And with throttle control, that's the easiest way to visualize. Say that from tick over speed to full power is this length on the engine, but the actuator only moves this far, you won't be able to reach full power. But the opposite is also true. If the control lever on your engine moves this much, but the actuator is trying to push the cable even further, it puts a lot of stress on the system. And after about four minutes, the system will decide something is wrong and go back to tick over speed. So make sure that the length of the stroke is correct. Same applies for the gearbox. You want to make sure that the gearbox reaches fully forward, neutral or fully reverse position, but you don't want the system to push continuously against the end stops. In this example, we will change the stroke for the gearbox. If we operate the gearbox now, so apply power, go to the command mode, now keep in mind that once the system is in command mode, you are in the warm-up mode where the gearbox is not operated if you apply power. So we're taking command now. System is in warm-up mode. The gearbox won't respond, so leave warm-up mode by pushing warm-up. And now you can see that the stroke is correct, but it's quite a small stroke. So the gearbox might not reach fully forward or fully reverse gear. So we want to increase the length of the stroke. To do so, remove power from the system, for instance by removing the power connector, press the up and down button and reapply power. You are now in programming mode and with the enter button I can change whether to change the forward, neutral or reverse position and the manual will tell you which code means which stroke. Now I'm jogging the lever all the way down to make sure reverse is correct. Push enter to set the neutral setting 
And again, the code is given by the manual. And now we're going to change the forward position. So this is now the length of the stroke. Press enter to confirm. Cycle power on or off by either removing the power plug from the control box or by switching the system on or off. And now let's check if the length of the stroke is actually changed. Command mode, leave warm up mode, and you can see that the stroke is now much longer. If the stroke is too long, you follow the same procedure, so unplug power, press up and down button, reapply power, so you'll go to programming mode, press enter and up or down to find the setting that you want to change, whether it's forward, neutral or reverse. Jog the lever up and down to the desired position. So here we're going to change it to a relatively small stroke, enter. Select the neutral position, enter. Jog it up to the forward position, enter. And now we've made the stroke a lot smaller. A trolling valve gives you full control over the speed of your belt. On a normal gearbox, if you apply forward power, the gears mesh and you will have a certain minimum speed, which can be too fast for easy maneuvering. With a trolling valve, you can change the speed of your propeller from 0 to 1 RPM all the way up to full power, so it makes maneuvering much more controllable. Now, the trolling valve settings are quite subtle, so before you change any setting, note down all of the settings that you currently have and then slowly change one setting at a time. But when you buy the system from Vetus, including with the engine, we will make sure that the settings are correct. But if you retrofit the unit, well, make sure you know down every setting before you start changing them. When you install a Vetus electronic engine control, it may seem quite complicated. And actually, it can get quite complicated unless you take a very much step-by-step -step approach. And what we strongly advise is have a good read through the manual and delete all of the parts that you don't need. The manual is written for about six different kinds of installations and you only need one of those six examples, so remove any part that you don't need. Same applies for the cable loom. A large part of the cable loom will be plug and play, like ignition lock to the dashboard, uh, 12 volt power feed to the dashboard, the NMEA 2000 network, the cables from steering station to steering station, and also the cable from steering station to control box. Mark the cables so you know where they have to go. The more complicated parts are the gearbox and throttle control. The gearboxes are typically supplied with connectors but without cabling, and it's up to you to extend the cable from the control box to the gearbox. Same applies for throttle control, the trolling valve, and in the next slides we will show you a couple of examples on how to do that. We will show you... The first example shows you a Deutsch engine. On top of the screen is the ECU, the engine control unit, basically the computer, and of course the dashboard on the bottom. The connector marked 1 is the ignition lock, and it's a straightforward plug-and-play connector. Connector number 2 is NMEA 2000 in and output, and connector 3 is where the throttle input will be connected. Typically the engine is supplied with a throttle sensor, a throttle position sensor, a mechanical sensor, which connects to port number 3. To connect the Deutsch engine you have to cut that cable, check the manual to check which colors should connect to that connector in order to provide throttle data from the control unit to the engine. The next example is for a VF line engine. The item I have in my hand is the throttle position sensor. If you have a mechanically operated throttle, a cable connects to the lever on top and the lever informs the ECU unit how much power you want applied. The connector to the right normally connects to the wiring harness and that is connected to the ECU. Now, in order to connect a electronic control, you have to cut this cable. This is a five wire connector and in the manual it mentions which wire to connect to which one coming from the control box. 
This is an electrically driven gearbox. Connector 1 is for the trolling valve and 2 and 3 are for forward and reversing gears. Always check the manual which one is forward, which one is reverse, especially when you have twin engine setups. Typically the gearbox comes with the connectors, but the connectors won't have a cable attached to them yet. And in the manual you can check which wire to connect to which connector. Because the system is so versatile, there are a lot of dip switch settings to be made and unfortunately we see some uh, misunderstanding there, some understandable misunderstanding. In the schematics the black dot indicates where the white dip switch should be. So on the black spot is on top basically means that the white part of the dip switch should be on top. Same applies for off. It's easy to see where uh, the confusion comes from. When in doubt in the manual it says which position is on, which is off, and it's also shown on the bottom of the control station. I hope this video was of use to you. I want to thank you on behalf of Vetus for your time and attention, and I wish you many enjoyable hours out on the water.